Uh, thank you for your uh, introduction. And first, I, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for giving me uh, a nice opportunity to give my talk. And my title is Relaxation of Finite Size Fluctuation in Thermal Equilibrium. So first, I, uh, I say the, the, the title seems a, a crazy idea. <laughs> Then what is relaxation? The, the, we start from the initial state. The D, this is the initial state of the hot T. And then uh, we leave this T uh, for a long time. And then the, the t, this T gets cold at, uh, up to the uh, room temperature. And this is the equilibrium state. And uh, this process is called the relaxation. And the, we take uh, the T infinity limit, so no further evolution happens macroscopically. Uh, macros uh, in equilibrium state. So normally, the relaxation is a relaxation to equilibrium, like this. And this time, uh, in this talk, we consider relaxation in summer, uh, summer equilibrium. Okay. And the purpose of this talk is uh, like this. Uh, first, I demonstrate the relaxation in summer equilibrium numerically in the HMF model, and then I propose a simple scenario uh, which is uh, applicable for a vast long range system. And then uh, I show the supporting evidence of the scenario uh, via the fluctuation response duration. And I note the two uh, points. Then uh, I'm concerned about the classical mechanics and no quantum effect is included. And second one is uh, no thermal noise is included in, the, in this new maker simulation. So the dynamics is a pure Hamiltonian dynamics, okay? And the system is a Hamiltonian mo uh, mean field model, uh, which is uh, sometimes uh, presented in this conference. And, uh, this part is uh, more or less a uh, x, y spin, and this one is a kinetic term. And uh, this sum is uh, described by the order parameter, which is uh, the geometric mean of the each, par uh, each x, y spin. And so this is the mean field vector. And then, once we get the Hamiltonian, we get the temporary evolution of the Hamiltonian system by the canonical equation of motion, like this. And it drives the system, initial system to the thermal equilibrium system. And after that, even after that, the canonical equation of motion drives the system like this, in the same way. And the order parameter is a equilibrium value plus fluctuation in the thermal equilibrium. The our initial state is here, the thermal equilibrium. Okay. In the thermal equilibrium, the, the magnetization value is like this, and uh, there's, a, uh, there's a phase transition point here, and the temperature is uh, the half. And at this point, uh, low temperature uh, value is uh, uh, low temperature region have the clustered state, and high, uh, high temperature region have the, the non clustered state. And now I'm starting taking, uh, talking about the temperature, but uh, this is just a parameterization of the equilibrium state. And uh, as I said, the dynamics is a pure Hamiltonian, and no summer uh, noise is included. And what we observe is uh, the second moment, because the first moment is uh, this uh, equilibrium value, the average of equilibrium value, and it is stationary by definition. So we concentrate on the fluctuation, this part. And the fluctuation is defined as usual. The, the square of average of square minus uh, square of average. And in this uh, study, the, this bracket T is defined as a time average of variable. So we start from the compute the time average from time zero and to T average, and then it is defined as time average of observable. So I show you, uh, so this dep depends on the, the finite size M and the T average. So I show the T average dependence of this variance. And the result is like this. Uh, the sample point is here and here, two points. So this point is closer to the critical point, 
and this one is a, a little bit far. And uh, horizontal axis is p average, and vertical axis is variance, uh, otherwise a fluctuation. Okay. And the first part is here, uh, the fluctuation increase, but this is not an interesting point, because uh, by definition, uh, we, uh, we define the fluctuation by time average. So uh, system start from here, and uh, it start from fluctuation, like this, like this. So starting uh, in the very uh, initial time, the variance is very sm uh, small. So increasing is very natural. So this is not the interesting part. The part interesting is uh, this part. This part has the, the anomalous plateau uh, before going to the another level. So this level is uh, the thermal equilibrium fluctuation level, but the system is trapped uh, at the another level, lower than the thermal equilibrium level. So this is the uh, yeah, uh, anomalous plateau. To check the, this new, uh, numerical simulation, uh, uh, because uh, I prepared the uh, summary equilibrium state numerically, so the, uh, it uh, might be the, the error of the numerical simulation. So to exclude, exclude this kind of possibility, I start, uh, this, uh, this result is start from the t equals zero, but I start from t equal t to five. So t to five is long enough to reach the summary equilibrium like this, like this. So I start from here, and then the, uh, decompute this uh, variance. And then the result is like this. So I start from t to, t to five, and uh, take average uh, during the t, t average. And the result is almost the same. So I back to the, the original one and the new one original one, new one, not so different, it's almost the same. So it is not the, the, uh, the this evolution is not the uh, cause of the numerical errors. So just the uh, effect of the uh, uh, dynamics. So we, uh, I demonstrated the relaxation from one level to another level in some equilibrium. So I explained why this kind of relaxation is possible in thermal equilibrium. So anybody system is uh, they are governed by canonical equation of motion, and if we take uh, any to infinite limit, uh, this uh, system is described by Brasov equation, and this Brasov equation have infinite number of Casimir invariant like this in long range system. So this is the point. So if we, uh, we are in the infinite limit, in, or if we are in the brass of dynamics, the dynamics is constrained in a Casimir level set. So this is the Casimir level set, like this and like this, like this. And the system should be confined on a Casimir level set, which, on, which is the initial condition is on uh, that point, uh, level set. But if we consider the finite n, so this Casimir is no more exact invariant, but the approximate invariant. So I, should, I call it should Casimir invariant. So this level set is not exact, but the should. So system uh, is tend to, confine, tend to be confined on a level set, but esca can escape from a level set. So the system confined the, uh, one level set, but can escape and confine levels and escape and confine and escape. So this is a process of the relaxation, which I showed you the previously. So the, uh, the relaxation, the previous relaxation is a successive escaping process from a should level set in finite size system. So, but this is just a scenario. So we need to support it. So what, how to check the, this scenario? So to check the scenario, I use the fluctuation response relation. So what is the fluctuation response relation? So now we consider the fluctuation, and this is a, a, something like a free energy, and system fluctuates around the bottom of the free energy like this. And 
on the other hand, if we consider the, the response uh, to the external force, then the, the free energy is modified from this shape to like this shape. And the system, the previous bottom is here, but the now, uh, current bottom is here. So here is a, the something, some displacement. So this displacement is a response to the, this external force. And both of uh, the fluctuation and the response are related to the bottom curvature of the free, uh, free energy. So this fluctuation and the response have the duration. And uh, in the Brassock theory, uh, we know the Cassini's restrict the, the response or uh, decrease the response because of the uh, invariance constraint. So this is the known part, and this is known part. So by using this part and this part, I check the, the Casimir is uh, restrict the fluctuation also. But the checking point is, uh, we, we have two checking points. Uh, now this is, uh, uh, is set in the statistical mechanics. So is it true in dynamics or not? And the second point is uh, that this theory, the so Brock theory, yeah, is, uh, is in the system of infinite n. But we are concerned in the finite n. So is it true even in the finite n? So we check that this, this and this point by n body simulation. Before going to the, the result, I revisit the fluctuation of the HMF model. As I said, the, in the low, uh, low energy part, the, uh, the full energy is like this, like a Mexican hat, and the fluctuation is like this. So, and this po uh, mode is a Goldstone mode and not so uh, interesting. So we uh, focus on the just the uh, uh, fluctuation for the longitudinal axis. So we, t we took the uh, absolute value of all the parameters. But in high, uh, high energy side, the free energy is like this, and the uh, MX and the MY fluctuate in the two-dimensional MX-MY plane. So in this case, the, this part, uh, so I, I remove this absolute value symbol, and the fluctuation is defined like this and this. And by the uh, rotational symmetry of the system, this vanishes. So this is a slightly different of the definition of uh, fluctuation in below and uh, uh, above the critical point. Okay, so anyway, the, the, uh, we can compute uh, this uh, fluctuation in any body system. And the check, uh, we check the uh, response uh, relation between the fluctuation and the response, both in the off-critical and on-critical. And at off-critical, we get a linear response like this. And in on-critical, we get a non-linear response. So we check the both at the off-critical and on-critical. At off-critical, the linear response is written like, like this, in the limit of a small external force, H. And this delta M is the response. And the response is proportional to the small external force. And the coefficient chi is uh, set susceptibility. And the important point is uh, this chi in Brassov dynamics is known. By, by this paper, and the relation is like this. So this is a susceptibility, and this is a fluctuation, and if everything is okay, uh, this equality should, be, uh, should hold. So uh, we check, uh, the, we put a uh, plot that this uh, chi is uh, derived by theory, and this uh, variance fluctuation uh, obtained by numeric, uh, anybody numeric, uh, we, we compare the, this, uh, this term and this term. And this is a result. The, we have three uh, lines. So this, we have uh, three types of susceptibility. The one is uh, the canonical susceptibility, like this gray line. And the blue, light blue one is microcanonical susceptibility, like this, like this. And the black solid line is uh, the susceptibility in brass of dynamics. Okay, because uh, 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 
microcanonical system have the energy constraint, so the susceptibility is suppressed. And brass of uh, dynamics have uh, additional custom invariant, so further su suppressed. And the, the line the se from theory and the point from n-body simulation and the point are on the uh, brass of line, like this. And in the above the critical point, the, these three lines collapse in one line, like this, so there is only one line. And numerical point is a little bit uh, far from line, but uh, if we increase the number of particles, so 10 to 2, 3, 4, 5, then the point approach to the theoretical line, like this. So we can conclude the uh, fluctuation response uh, relation hold, even in the uh, finite energy system in dynamics. So this is a uh, fast check. Oh, sorry, I, I skip this inset. So now uh, we can understand uh, what happened in the, the, the previous uh, relaxation process. So I draw the two lines, the black solid line and the light blue line here and here, black line and the, uh, light blue line here. And this black line corresponds to the brass of susceptibility level. So this, for this line, uh, for this picture, the point is here. And this microcanonical level corresponds to the, this point here. So this relaxation corresponds to the, the process from brass of level to the microcanonical level. Okay, so the second check is a nonlinear response at the critical point. Now what we know is a linear response question, susceptibility diverge at the critical point. So the response is normal linear response. So the nonlinearity of the response is described by the critical exponent delta. And in statistical mechanics, delta is the three, but in Brasov system, uh, previously we derived it is three over half. As, uh, three so uh, we use this difference, this difference to check the scenario at the critical point. And the problem is how to relate and how to make a relation between the, this critical point and the fluctuation. The idea is uh, to use the Landau's phenomenological uh, shield free energy. The Landau's free uh, energy like this, so first term is M square, and normally, this is a M, M to force due to the symmetry of the system. And this is an external force term. But I keep the, this delta uh, in, in the generic uh, side. And suppose the fluctuation with the G equal, so this level is G equal constant over N, because G is uh, the free energy per one particle. So this is the assumption a phenomenological assumption. And at t equal tc, so at critical point, and uh, no external force, so I check, uh, I balance this part term and this term. And then, th with this assumption, uh, we get uh, uh, how large m uh, is in, at the critical point. And a short uh, derivation gives uh, the scaling, finite size scaling for the fluctuation. And the statistical mechanics, so delta equals three, uh, predict n to minus half, but brusque dynamics, delta equals three half, represent, uh, pre represent uh, the n to minus four over five. So uh, this is a strange exponent. So the checking point is uh, this exponent is true or not. So I uh, show the, the n dependence of the, this fluctuation at the critical point. So result is like this. Uh, so this is uh, the n in log scale, and this is uh, the fluctuation in log scale. And this line is the 0 0.779 and 0 0.770 and 0 0.779 is close to the 4 over 5. And the difference of the color is uh, correspond to the difference of the averaging time. So anyway, the, the if the averaging time is small enough, the uh, finite size scaling has a scale, uh, scale exponent minus four over five instead of the normal uh, half 
exponent. And this inset is, uh, uh, the vertical axis of this inset is uh, like this. So the uh, so horizontal line corresponds to the, the exponent of minus four, five, 4 over 5. And the, we can confirm the exponent 4 over 5 from this uh, picture also. Yes? This time, temperature? It's a color. Just, just a critical point. At the okay, so we we could confirm the, the this oh, this strange component at the critical point. So we have checked uh, uh, the scenario or uh, relation between the fluctuation and the, uh, response at the critical point and uh, out out of the critical point like this. So we have checked uh, the, this point, uh, this point and this point, so relation between the Casimir and the response we know. And we check the numerically the relation between fluctuation and the response like this. So the two check points are cleared. So this is summary and discussion. And so the main message of this talk is uh, long range system have uh, with finite n, have the should Casimir constraint. And the, this should uh, Casimir constraint, should Casimir constraint give an anomalous finite size fluctuation even in some equilibrium. And the anomaly is uh, like a relaxation in some equilibrium or a strange scaling at the critical point. So this mechanism is very simple. So I expect uh, this. So anomalous finite size fluctuation appeared in the very large uh, class of uh, long range systems. And the essential point of this relaxation in some equilibrium is the uh, existence of should constraint. So if it, uh, should constraint exists, uh, the we can expect the relaxation beyond the long range inter uh, systems. So for instance, uh, if we consider the particles linked by hard springs, and in this case, the hard spring the plays the role of the should, uh, should constraint because this is, uh, is approximate bond length. So uh, 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 I expect uh, this kind of strength, uh, anomalous finite scaling in this uh, model. So this model is like uh, molecules, uh, protein, or something like that. But uh, this is uh, future work. Okay, so thanks for you, thank, thank you for your attention. <laughs>